Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen. The subject of today's video newsletter, well, we're going to answer a question that I've been asked on one of the videos. Someone has asked me for a specific example. So I've put up a, um, a video about design of experiments and they're saying, ah, you don't have an example which is my industry. You don't have an example which is medical. You don't have an example which is a CNC lathe. You don't have an example and they want me to come up with a specific example. And I want to talk about the fact that actually when you watch my videos you don't need specific examples. All of the techniques, all of the methodology is totally transferable into any situation. And that's what today's video is about. You can, you can just transplant the technique. You just have to think how it applies to your situation. So we gotta cover that in today's video. Just before I get started, remember the books. Statistical Process Control for Small Batch Production, just been published. You can get this from lulu.com. The link is below. Design of experiments. We're going to be talking about design of experiments in this video. If you like what's in this video and you want to know everything that I would teach my clients about design of experiments, it's in this text. Design of experiments for 21st century engineers. And finally, if you're into Six Sigma, you're a green belt and a black belt, and you want to make pots of cash for your company, Drink Tea and Read the Paper is the book you need to read. It avoids the maths and goes for the practical, how to do it stuff, how to make more money, how to solve problems. Yeah, the practical application of what you've learned. So there are the three books, the links are below. You can get them all from lulu.com. Be great to receive your support because I'm currently working on another book, Failure Mode and Effects Analysis. So let's cover this subject, which is, it's all about specific <coughs> examples. Do I need a specific example? What I would say to you is no, all of this is transferable. Now in a lot of my videos, I like to draw this diagram. I like to draw input output diagrams. You have a process. What does your process do usually? It tries to make money. You have inputs and you have an output. I'm just going to put one output in this case, but sometimes you have two or three things that you're trying to hit all at the same time. And here's the transferable, but this is the way I think, okay? So if you ask me to help you, this is, this is your process. This is what I'm thinking. I, I'm not, I don't care whether it's chemistry. I don't care whether it's physics. I don't care whether you make staplers, televisions, whether you make vaccines for COVID, whatever it is you're trying to do. If you tell me you've got three inputs to your process, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the exact same thing. So here's the point. You, you have a process that's trying to make money. You have inputs. to that process. In this case, you've identified three inputs. And what you would like to do is you would like to model the link between those three inputs and the output. Now, if you were, let's say you were plastic molding, you're making the body to this felted pair. What might be the three variables that you test? Well, maybe you test time, temperature, pressure. Okay, so these three now will go here. You have to decide in which window you're going to test. So you have a design space for those three variables. So in this case, time, you're gonna be tested along the bottom. 
temperature is tested up the side pressure is tested in this direction so we are going to test these eight corners that's where the tests are going to take place time temperature pressure you have to decide what this is so if you decide that you're going to test 5 to 10 seconds temperature 220 to 250 pressure I don't know 40 ton to 60 tons I don't know what the what the highs and lows might be but there's there's an example so I've just given you a molding example then you say to me yeah but I want a specific example I work in medicine I want to I want a medical example well okay let's say you're trying to understand the efficacy of a drug you think that giving um, let's have a think you think that giving zinc to someone will have an effect on a particular disease so you're looking at zinc as your treatment and you want to understand how well it uh, performs in treating a particular disease so what have we got this time well let's think of some variables what you've got to do always is just think of individual settings Indiv I call them dials but in this case they're not really dials but let's think of what you might do with the treatment of zinc so you might decide the time of day is important so whether somebody takes the zinc in the morning or in the evening okay so you've you've seen some some scientific work that says maybe the time that the dose is given is important then you might decide that obviously the dosage is important okay and finally um, maybe we might choose the method the method of dosing do we take it as a tablet or do we take it as a liquid all right so again you've seen some scientific evidence that says maybe that would make a difference to the way that the body um, deals with the drug and deals with the zinc and the way it gets absorbed into the body etc now there are your three variables they're not time temperature and you've got to obviously you've got to set the highs and the lows so here we went 5 and 10 to 22 50 we went 40 and 60 so the time of the day maybe we go 8 a.m. and we go 4 p.m. so that's yeah time of day dosage 40 milligrams 60 milligrams method of dosing liquid versus tablet now by the way I don't do any work in medicine at all I don't do um, this is not my this is not my area of expertise so the person that's asked me for the specific example I wouldn't have a specific example for every uh, manufactured situation for every business situation I could think of but certainly if you if you drop me a line and you say hey Paul we want to do a DOE and our business is it, it's internet marketing we want to try and get more people to buy more product through the design of our website okay now as long as you've got variables you can adjust so maybe the color of the website the color of the page the size of the text the style of the the way the the pages interact the, the where the menu sits is it old-fashioned sitting on a menu or is it modern sitting on those three lines or those three dots in the right hand corner does it make a difference what the click-through rate is does it make a difference what the purchasing rate is we have settings that we can change we could change the text style you could go for times new roman against calibri let's say um, there's all sorts of things that you can test if you can do that you can put it in a designed experiment it's very easy to do but in every situation the doe is the same you're going to test these eight corner points 
you're going to test these eight corner points. It's just that the, the, the names of the corner points are different, but it's exactly the same test each time. So when somebody says to me, can you give me specific examples? I can't because I, co I couldn't have worked in every situation, but you don't need specific examples. What you need to be able to do is identify your inputs, individual things though. They must be individual settings, like the dosage quantity and the method of dosing and the time of day. Yeah, you don't want to go technique one against technique two. That, that typically is not a good way of doing it. So what you could do is to say, I think dosing at, at 10 o'clock with a 30 milligram dose uh, and it's liquid, that will be better than a, um, a 12 p.m. Uh, time with 60 milligrams in a tablet. So what you're doing there is you're going method A against method B. That way of testing is useless. You have to be able to break these variables out, then you can test in the pattern, then you can make more money. So, do you need specific examples? No. Every process looks like this. Your job, and by the way, you'll do this much better than me, is to identify those inputs and to decide where the window of interest is to go and test. Once you do that, you can perform the DOE, which looks like this. That's for three variables. There's DOEs for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and more. You can perform the standard designed experiment that gets you the most amount of information in the shortest amount of time and then you can make more money and you'll do that so much better than I would. I just help you apply this stuff once you tell me what those are. Get out there, identify your variables, do design of experiments and make more money.